Hi all, and welcome back to Philosophy, the podcast where I talk about whatever I like. Today I'm going to be talking about a topic that I am extremely passionate about, and that is a kind of a branch of this um, parenting ourselves in the form and shape of dealing with pain and dealing with difficulties and trauma even um and this new theory for me so it's not new but this new theory that i realized which is that you cannot train yourself to take pain better and you shouldn't train yourself to take pain better but um yeah let's let's <laughs> can you tell this is not scripted uh is it, is it obvious at all um no but yeah let's oh, let's get started let's get started with the painting and let's get started with the talking and hopefully by um by yeah working on this painting i'll kind of calm myself down a bit and be able to be a bit more coherent so let's slow it down and let's start talking about it so basically i've been reading a lot of parenting books recently and one of the most groundbreaking things that I think I've realized is a argument against the thought that the more pain you go through, the better you become at dealing with pain. Because this is definitely a position that I have held for the longest time, um, which is, oh, um, and it, it almost in the sense that it's been a bit jokes. Um, and what I mean by that is when people would tell me that, oh, Elizabeth, you seem to be such a calm person. Or Elizabeth, you seem to be like, um, yeah, you just take... Uh, you, you you're positive or whenever people say something like this there's a huge part of me on the inside that laughs and goes ha 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 it's because of all the trauma and there's so many memes like this that just say that um you know my coping mechanism is all the coping mechanisms that i've had are because of trauma and all this stuff and i have a lot of arguments on as to why that's probably not the best thing in the world and trauma coping mechanisms that are brought out born out of trauma are i think rarely actually the best thing to do and effective they're just that coping mechanism which are not the best but that's not the top that's not the topic here the topic here is is it true that going through difficult things makes you a stronger person and if that is true then should we be putting ourselves in situations where we go through more difficult things should we be putting our children in situations where they go through difficult things or is there no such thing like this so I think when I was younger, my my mom definitely does hold this position that, you know, going through tough things makes you stronger. Um, she's definitely told this to me explicitly before. Um, and in, in certain things that she would almost tease me about in saying, and then now as an adult, when I asked her about it, she was like, oh, it's because I wanted to make you stronger. So I wanted you to kind of, um, yeah, I wanted to to make you realize that okay, it's a bit painful, but you know, you'll, you'll, you'll go through it and you'll be a stronger person for it. So training someone to become stronger. And I always had this position and I think it kind of gave me a sort of calmness and um, almost an attitude of whenever I went through something or I got through something, I thought, well, you know, at least I'm a stronger person now. So, so that's, that's good. And I think the first time that I really judged this was around death in general, because I thought, okay, one of the most difficult things to deal with is the death of a loved one but you can't train yourself for a death of a loved one. And I was very young when I first realized this and I started thinking about it. I think it was when my granddad died and I started thinking, well, you know, how I can't train myself. I mean, I'm going through this, which was still, I think one of the worst feelings I've ever had in my life. And I thought, well, this isn't making me any stronger. And this isn't training me for, um, you know, the hopefully a very, very long time away from now, the death of other people in my life. Um, and there's no way that I could have prepared myself for this. It seemed like a very, very black and white thing. And I thought, okay, is this an exception then? Um, is death an exception to this rule that I don't think anyone can say, oh, there's training you can do for the death of someone. Not really. I mean, we all know the same facts that people will die for sure and that we never know when they will die for sure. And with that, there's not much training we can do. Even when we know that someone is going to pass away, it still hurts and that's a pain that I think was a bit <laughs> unhelpful. It didn't train, didn't set me up for anything else. So I think that was the first crack in this theory in my mind that I had been holding so close to myself for a very long time. And another time where I started to question this was, um, I think as I, as, 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 <laughs> as I'm an adult, I very often do things that when they're pointed out by other people, they're like, well, that was clearly 
very inconvenient for you. Why did you do that? Um, and that could be either overworking by 40 hours a week. And people will say, uh, when I, I rarely mention the amount of work that I do um, in real life to people because I know the reactions that it will get. Um, unless it's people that's in my family, I will be honest and open to my family. But with most people, I won't mention it because um, it's 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 a bit weird and it's a bit much and I, and I, and I know that. Um, and the reactions when I do test this recently um, where I'm kind of honest of like yeah I had a you know I had a one hour session with someone that I was supposed to teach and it went on for four hours um, because I just wanted to do the most and the reaction is like well Elizabeth is that is that why why are you doing this Um, and although I do obviously get pleasure in many many ways in, in the work that I do there's also pain there there's pain because I can't film podcasts because I'm so overworked there's pain because my YouTube channel is falling behind because I can't go to gym as much because I can't socialize as much or I don't sleep as much and it always sacrifices other things so I'm putting myself in specific pain and I'm wondering why um and so I wonder if I have this strong conviction that going through pain and difficult situations will make me a stronger person if then perhaps am I subconsciously chasing pain? Am I subconsciously chasing pain to become stronger? Am I sitting in pain for a bit longer than I should because it then will make me a stronger person um, or it will make me a better person or it is a virtue? So that was the second crack when I realized, oh no, maybe I'm seeking uncomfortable situations now because I think that they will make me a better person in the long run or I'm not avoiding situations as soon as I sh- should and my my reactions are all off right like it's um it's not like you know the spinal cord reactions it's like oh heat temperature pain like oh away I think I'm changing those because I'm adding this conscious level of no but this is a good thing uh, no but this is better in the long term um which I think is the some thoughts and beliefs that I've eternalized from when I was younger and then I wondered well how much is this bleeding into my personal life so these were things that I kind of had brewing in the back of my mind um, over the last few years one was from way earlier with my granddad and one was for from more recently when um, I realized the that I make my life harder rather than make my life easier very often and I was thinking well why <laughs> why are my reflexes all off why am I what am I protecting here and what am I valuing when I don't seem to be putting my own comfort or health as my first priority and I thought perhaps I am valuing pain in and of itself as in a better long-term thing to go through and so this was sitting in the back of my mind um, and then I started reading parenting parenting books and there was something so seemingly obvious but yet I don't think I'd ever probably heard of it before and it just completely shattered I think my view on pain and endurance and um, kind of support and honesty and basically um, what these parenting books were saying um, and I think two of them focus on this particularly um, is that you cannot and you should not teach children to go through pain you shouldn't train them to go through pain you shouldn't let them sit through difficult situations and there is a bit of nuance to this but the the main theory was that children should you, you can't say oh I want my children to be independent therefore you know once in a while I'll just abandon them so they can figure out things by themselves um and although theoretically I thought beforehand that yeah you know at a certain age that's a that's a good thing I mean I felt like that was done to me and I'm stronger for it and you know you don't want to coddle people and you want them to be independent people that's what you should be doing but that's awful (laughs) and what these books were saying were that actually the best thing you can do to a child is to show it love and support and that sounds cheesy but there's a reasoning is to show them unconditional love and support at all times because children will do much better when they are on their on their own if they have a very strong example of what unconditional love means if children can think I know that my parents will care for me no matter what I know that I will have support no matter what I know I have an example in my mind of what a healthy kind of parental relationship is these children will do much better in the long term and very very interestingly there was this thing in the book on how being responsible has its roots in responsiveness if you are held when you cry as a baby if you are supported and given resources every single time you need them as a child or like most times that you importantly need them as a child you if someone is being responsive to you 
you start to be responsible then for others and you tend to be a better child. Most parents would want their children to be independent. And actually, children who were not, whose cries were, babies whose cries were not responded to soon enough, ch- children who were not given enough like attention and positive like love ended up being a lot less independent than children who were actually given the support. And this just blew my mind because I remember when I was being younger, um, I, I've heard comments here and there from, from various different people saying, oh, it's so awful. They're coddling their children. They're just going to hang around them all the time you need to you know toughen these kids up and that's awful that's so terrible why do we need to toughen kids up and most importantly i don't have children so this is not parenting advice sorry i just need to preface this when i say these things because they're coming from kid raising books but i'm not giving parenting advice but i'm talking about myself here i'm talking about me and myself because i treat myself in this way where i'm like hey elizabeth just sit through the pain i'm not going to support you i know that what you need right now is a day off i know that what you need right now is to talk to someone i know what you need right now is to you know be forgiving of yourself and not go through this pain but I won't do that to myself I'll say hey Elizabeth you'll be stronger in the long term like you're fine just go through this like just stick through it a bit longer just stay in this job just stay in this role just keep doing this thing and you know you'll you'll be stronger for it and that's just so awful because it has its roots in the same sort of like parenting behavior where I want myself to be more independent and strong and therefore I'm like no I'm not going to give you you're being a child right now Elizabeth and I'm not going to give you the, the support you need what you need is to stick through it and then you'll be strong for it and I just think that is awful I think that I have a very bad example of unconditional love for myself and I have this very bad kind of thought of I'm training myself to become stronger and there's no such thing as training yourself to become stronger I genuinely believe this now um in that in the way of that you shouldn't actively seek it right it's kind of like death in the same way there's no such thing as preparing yourself for a loved one's death it's just not a thing but if you have good mental health if you have a supportive environment if you have a supportive family if you have a healthy relationship with this person who is about to leave that is the best place you can be in for dealing with that pain when it comes because I don't think we should avoid pain I genuinely don't but I don't think we should train ourselves for it either I don't think we should linger in it for more than is needed and I think I've discussed this before there's no value I don't think there is genuine value in wallowing in pain I don't think it's a strength to be able to wallow in it I don't think you know, pain is good because it teaches you something. No, screw that. No, it's not. It's awful. Or like, no, maybe maybe not. It can be awful, but it's not. It's not. It just is. It's one of those things that just is. I mean, happiness most of the times is good. I think pain most of the times it just, it just is. It's you know, it's an unavoidable part of being alive. But it's not something that I think I should seek as much, and it's not something that I think I should chase as much. And it's it's I should I think be a bit more attuned to my cues because I think I'm parenting myself in a very detached style where I'm going oh I see what you need right now you feel a bit burnt out Elizabeth oh are you a bit tired okay yeah no (laughs) no breaks for you just keep on doing this thing trust me you'll be better in the long term and I feel I've internalized that very parental voice that I was given the same voice which is kind of ignores these cues the same voice that goes yep pain is good for you you're a stronger girl you'll be fine um kind of attitude rather than okay let's let's give this some space looks like you're not okay what do you need right now let's give you um let's give you some more like love and reassurance and then when things are difficult as they often are um and as they unavoidably are then i'm in a better place to go i know what support and love looks like even if it's just support and love for myself and therefore i know that i can go through this rather than having my cues ignored and then not being able to trust myself because there's a huge thing in the book about um, listening to babies' cues. And of course, that was in the context of crying and breastfeeding. But it's kind of the same thing that if they're not responded to in time, if they're not, if, if a baby, they come pre-programmed, <laughs> they come pre-packaged, knowing that, you know, if they cry, they're supposed to get attention. And then if that cue isn't matched with the adequate response, they will not trust themselves and they will not trust their cues and that that connection will disappear. And in the same way, I wonder if I've really, really weakened this connection between going through pain and giving myself a break or giving myself appreciation and love or giving myself space or giving myself just positive things in general. I've ruined that cue where when things become painful, I don't do anything. I just stick through them. And when things are good, I don't do anything. I just stick through them. And 
I'm therefore completely out of touch I think with myself wherein I live my life by my schedules and my goals and my routines and my calendars rather than living my life by me um I'm like a strict parent where no this is what you're supposed to do I guess it's an inconvenient time for you now but you know you got to do it you'll be stronger in the end you'll thank me one day I treat myself very much like a you'll thank me one day sort of parent which I think it's just awful. What am I? Why do I think I have more knowledge than myself? Like, why do I think that my consciousness, which is a really, really sus part of myself, my consciousness, this narrating voice, my thinking voice is super suspicious. I should not trust her. But why do I think that she is more mature, more responsible and more adult than my feelings and myself and my body and what I feel that I want when I genuinely feel like I can't do this today. Today I'm tired. Today I'm exhausted. Today, you know, there's a lot of small things that were said and done around me that just make me insecure and sad. Why do I not trust that that person needs love and support and a break, but rather I trust my higher reasoning to go, nah, don't think so. Not buying it. You'll be fine. Trust me. You're stronger than that. Um, Like you'll feel better if you do it you'll feel better if you do it. Why? Why? And I get to some extent, yes, of course. I mean, I, I don't want to get fired from my job and I, I do have obligations around other people. I'm talking here strictly in terms of the selfish things that I do for myself, which is most things. I don't have children and I don't have a family. So um, yeah, most things that I do are selfish things for myself. This is all the difference between, you know, studying a bit harder or filming another video and not reading versus not reading. These are not differences in you know, cooking for other people or taking care of a child, that would be very different. But these are just things that me and myself have just, um, yeah, not, not, not done very well. And I think it's so bizarre because there's almost this virtue in neglecting yourself and thinking that I would go above and beyond for someone else because that is so much easier with very little regard for me. And I think that's something that I take from my parents because they go above and beyond for us with no regard or little regard for themselves. And I think it's just, it's not the best thing and it's not very healthy and it leads to very bad treatment of myself. So I think I'm going through a bit more of a stage of like getting to re-know myself and getting to stop and listen to my cues and when I'm crying and screaming for milk and when I'm um not milk but yeah things like that when I'm when I'm in that state where um I want to kick and scream if I was a child um rather than going oh no let's ignore that because those are those are cues that I have not been paying attention to for years those are cues that a long time ago I kind of shut out and um ignored and I think I'm going through kind of reacquainting myself with myself and going through again a new stage of what are you saying uh like let me hear let me listen and what do you want because I think like where this all started from is that a healthy relationship with anyone and the easiest person to create well not the easiest sorry the the best person to create this good relationship with is yourself um and a healthy relationship with anyone will trump anything and will put you in the best position to deal with difficulty and the single person I think that we all should and I genuinely feel the single person and this is like the whole point of this podcast or the whole point of like most of the things that I try to do and talk about is this understanding why we feel the way we do and understanding us ourselves and I think this relationship with that voice in our head is something that I definitely do need to work on and it's kind of like my main mission um at the moment in terms of like self-work but yeah that's my main mission with myself at the moment is getting reacquainted and re-listening to myself and my body and fixing that relationship and not going no I know better um no this is going because yes financially of course working more will do better for you um actually not so sure about that because arguably if you have a better mental health and if you actually feel better you might get more opportunities and you're more if you're more confident and you work on yourself more you might reach for things that might end up working out better for you financially so even that is a bit sus but in general I think there is massive underrating as to having a strong stable secure loving environment within yourself 
wherein imagine what that would be like wherein you could always um you know approach any difficulty and any challenge in the world with the thought of i know i'll be fine though because i know that i'm okay with myself and i know that i trust i have the love and trust and support and space to get over this and therefore i have the confidence to do this well and you know hopefully most of us will be blessed in having that within our families and i think that is like the most beautiful thing in the world and i wish i could create something like that someday for other for children of my own uh, so for other people but at the very least at the very least it's worth doing that with ourselves i think and it's harder i think like i said it's a lot easier for me to um do that for other people but at the very least um went all out of focus yeah there we go uh but at the very least doing that for ourselves is i think one of the things that is the most worth doing so yes that was this very rambly um my very rambly thoughts on kind of yeah self-love and safety within ourselves in that safe space um but yeah if this resonated at all always happy always happy for thoughts um thank you so much for listening be kinder to yourself and uh everyone else and don't believe everything you think thanks bye